What is going on ladies and gents, Michael or Legacy Kill HD back today with another top 25 video for you. Today we're going to be going over the top upcoming games of 2017. A lot has changed since E3, a lot of games were announced, and we also got a lot more information on some other upcoming titles. So make sure you guys dive into the comment section below throughout this video, let me know what titles you're looking for the most, and make sure you subscribe if you do enjoy this video, and follow me on Twitter for all kinds of news and information on upcoming games. Let's get started at the number 25 spot with Tekken 7. It is a fighting game developed and published by Bandai Namco Entertainment. The game is the ninth installment in the Tekken series and the first to make use of the Unreal Engine. It focuses on one-on-one -on -one battles. Two new mechanisms are introduced in the game being Rage Art and Power Crush. The game story will be much darker than ever before, closer in tone to Tekken 4, and will serve as the conclusion of the Mishima clan saga. We will be seeing this sometime in early 2017. So far it looks pretty promising and I'm really interested to see how they will be utilizing the Unreal Engine. Moving on to the number 24 spot, we have Resident Evil 7. It's a survival horror video game developed by Capcom, the 11th entry into the main Resident Evil series and the first main series installment to be played from a first person perspective. It will be set in a modern day and features a new main character that does not have the combat skills the main characters of recent Resident Evil games display. It will make the connections to previous installments but will have no returning characters. So far what we've seen in Resident Evil 7, it does look very intriguing and I'm not too crazy about sequels that have gone this far but so far what they've been working on it looks definitely interesting and I think it has to be on everybody's radar for the future of 2017. At the number 23 spot we have Kingdom Hearts 3. It's an action role playing video game developed and published by Square Enix. Gameplay is said to be very similar to its predecessor Kingdom Hearts 2, and the plot reads as so. Continuing from Dream Drop Distance, Sora, Donald, and Goofy will attempt to search for seven Guardians of Light and the key to return hearts, while King Mickey and Riku search for previous Keyblade wielders and attempt to stop Master Xenohearts' plan to balance the light and darkness, which may ultimately lead to the final showdown between Sora and the Master. Kingdom Hearts 3 will serve as the final chapter of the Dark Seeker saga, and honestly, this is all about nostalgia. I love Kingdom Hearts. I played it when I was a lot younger, and I'm very happy to see that they're finally going to be making this. This is a game that went all the way back to 2006 and it's something a lot of people have been waiting for years. And at the number 22 spot we have Agents of Mayhem. It's an open world action adventure video game set in the Saints Row universe developed by none other than Volition. Agents of Mayhem is a spin-off of the Saints Row series taking place after the recreate Earth ending a Saints Row get out of hell. The game's plot revolves around an organization known as Mayhem. The goal is to stop the terrorist organization Legion from destroying the world's nations. The game takes place in a futuristic version of Seoul, South Korea billed as the City of Tomorrow. We don't know very much about Agents of Mayhem, but knowing that it's a parody pretty much of GTA and a lot of different types of game, it's going to be pretty fun to dive into whatever that Volition has set up for us next. And at the number 21 spot we have Sea of Thieves. It's an action adventure video game developed by Rare and published by Microsoft Studios. The game is purported to have elements of first person gameplay and features user generated content in which players have the ability to craft their custom stories by using in game tools. The game will feature co-op gameplay and set in an open world multiplayer and environment. So far what we've seen of Sea of Thieves it definitely looks very intriguing. It is a console exclusive for Xbox One and obviously Windows PC. But I, my question really is about the longevity of this game. I really do hope it keeps up. It definitely seems like they're trying to grab elements from a lot of different popular games. Hopefully that works out and hopefully it's a great game. At the 20 spot we have System Shock. It's a first person action role playing video game reboot being developed by Night Dive Studios who acquired the rights in 2012. Night Dive announced their plans to develop a reimagining of System Shock as a new title when they got the rights. Night Dive has opted to simply name the new game System Shock as they consider the effort they are putting into the title more of a reboot of the franchise rather than a remastering of the original game. Currently they have a Kickstarter starter set up so that they can actually make this project happen. They're trying to reach $900,000 United States and currently they're at $800,000 with 23 days remaining so this definitely is happening. Alongside the Kickstarter campaign the studio released a free demo featuring the first level of the game exhibiting their efforts so far on the project and it demonstrates pretty much their commitment and passion to the faithfully rebooting the game. So far I played actually the first little level it definitely is very fun and I really do hope this actually does happen and definitely seems like it will and it's just one of those classic games games coming back kind of like how we had Doom. I really do hope this ends up being a great game because so far it looks amazing and just I hope that the funding keeps getting better just because I feel like there's so many different things that they're planning on adding and if it does happen it's going to be a blast. Now let's get down to that number 19 spot with Horizon Zero Dawn. It's going to be an action role playing video game in development for PS4 only. 
It's made by the Killzone developers and it does look very intriguing. The players will be taking control of Aloy, a hunter and archer, as she progresses through a post-apocalyptic land ruled by mechanized creatures such as robotic dinosaurs. The game is set 1,000 years in a future in which humanity has long abandoned Earth due to the world being dominated by robotic creatures. So far what we've seen this, it's been a lot of gameplay. I do like the little interesting type of fact that we're getting dinosaurs but they're actually robots now. It's just an intriguing concept that I really didn't think we would ever get and I just love the idea and and I really do like the execution that we've seen so far. I'm really interested to see what type of story this is, if we're going to be diving into these dinosaurs, robotic dinosaurs origins, and uh, figure out what happened, I guess, maybe back into the past and how they came to be. At the 18th spot, we have Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's a role-playing game for PC, Xbox One, and PS4. It will be a single-player experience with branching quest lines and a highly interactive world encouraging emergent gameplay. It's going to be period accurate with help of uh, historians that I guess are backing up this whole story and the setting. It's set in the medieval kingdom of Bohemia, an imperial state of the Holy Roman Empire with a focus, like I said before, on historically accurate and realistic content. Kingdom Come Deliverance was actually recently delayed till sometime in 2017, which does get me worried. There were certain aspects of the trailers that didn't look very good, just kind of like the voice acting and some of the gameplay, but hopefully this will give them time to get the things straight. I know that War Horse Studios, which are the developers of this, are working alongside with Star Citizen getting, you know, their brainstorming to help each other out, which is something that I really do like. So hopefully they'll get things straight and hopefully we'll get a good release when it does come out in sometime 2017. At the 17th spot we have Mountain Blade Bannerlord. It's a medieval action role playing video game developed by Tale Worlds Entertainment. The game is set 200 years before Mountain Blade Warband. It takes place during the decline of the Cal Radium Fire and the formation of the kingdoms that appear in the previous games. The Calradian Empire and its downfall are similar to the Roman Empire's fall and the formation of the early Middle Eastern, North African, and European kingdoms. The armor, weapons, and architecture will draw inspiration from 600 to 1100 AD. Bannerlord will include at least six major factions, each composed of competing clans with their own goals, as well as minor warband factions like mercenaries. This is probably one of my fan favorite games just because I played this series so many hours, so many days, that was invested into this. It's just a really fun game and I'm glad that they're continuing on with this, improving so many different aspects. The mod community made this game a lot better than what it actually was when it got released and it probably is why it's such a popular game out there in the PC community. And seeing that they're moving forward with Bannerlord and seeing they're improving on Siege mode and a lot of different aspects, I'm really pumped to see what they have in store with this next sequel. At the 16th spot we have Halo Wars 2. It's a real-time strategy video game developed by 343 Industries and Creative Assembly. The game features two playable factions, humanity's main military arm, the UNSC, who returned from the first game, and a new alien faction known as the Banished, who serve as a replacement for the Covenant. The game is set 28 years after the events of Halo Wars and directly after the events of Halo 5 Guardians. The original Halo Wars closes with the crew aboard the UNSC warship Spirit of Fire entering cryosleep and drifting into space. Since that event, the war between humanity and the military alien alliance known as the Covenant has ended and the Spirit of Fire has been declared lost with all hands. So far what we've seen of Halo Wars 2, it definitely looks intriguing. I love the original strategy game, one of the Halo games I'm really looking forward to, and I really do want to see what they have in store with story and pretty much gameplay and seeing how much fun it will be to explore this little real-time strategy game that they create for us. Now to the 15th spot we have Scalebound. It's an action role-playing video game developed by Platinum Games. Players assume control of Drew, who is accompanied by a dragon called Thuban. Players can use a variety of weapons to defeat enemies and may issue commands to the dragon, which assists players during battles. Unlike other games developed by Platinum Games, the game puts more focus on graphical qualities and the role-playing aspect instead of action. It was supposed to be released in 2016, but it was unfortunately delayed till 2017. We still really don't know why that is so. That's the only thing that gets me worried about this title. It is definitely going to be fun to play a different type of RPG. I haven't really seen a lot of Platinum games, so this really has to be on my radar just to see how it ends up being, because I'm a really big fan of RPG type of games. But so far what we've heard about Scalebound, it definitely sounds intriguing, but seeing a game being delayed to 2017, definitely catches my eye because it sometimes means there could be something wrong. Hopefully that isn't so, and hopefully Scalebound delivers with an amazing game experience. At the 14th spot we have Shenmue 3. It's an action-adventure open-world video game for PS4 and PC releasing in December of 2017. It will be following the story of the teenage martial artist Ryo Hazuki, who has journeyed from Japan to the mountains of China in search of his father's killer, where he meets Ling Shenhua, a mysterious girl who previously appeared in his dreams. After learning the legend of her village, which foretells 
a united path between them, they embark on a new journey which will reveal their shared destiny. It's crazy to think that it's been 15 years since Shenmue 2, and so far we've seen very little of Shenmue 3. We saw a couple of screenshots, we've seen a little bit of the open world, but it looks like it's going to be interesting to explore. I mean, I know a lot of people didn't really see that we're going to be getting an open world type of game, and so far it looks like they're in their early stages. I know the story just got finalized, but it's going to be interesting how they'll conclude this story and what type of open world that they'll build. But I'm just glad that we're actually getting a Shenmue 3, a game that a lot of people didn't know 100% if we were actually going to get. And at the 13th spot, we have Darksiders 3. It's being developed by Nordic Games, who took over the franchise after THQ went bankrupt. In February of 2016, it was officially confirmed that Darksiders 3 was in the works, but no one knows when the release date is or what the story will focus on yet. We've played as Death and War, and we're probably going to be going through Strife and Fury and their story as they are the last two horsemen that we haven't explored yet, but maybe we'll get all four of them. That would be a lot of fun. I just want to see what Nordic Games has in store, just because when a new developer takes over, it really does get me worried. I really do want to see what this is the next step in this franchise, as I really did like the first and the second game. And at the 12th spot, we have Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's an open world tactical shooter video game in development by Ubisoft Paris. Ubisoft actually says it will be one of the biggest open world games that they have ever published. The game will be playable on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. The game is set in Bolivia, which in the game is the largest supplier of drugs like cocaine. These supplies are controlled by the Santa Blanca Drug Cartel, a powerful organization whose influence has destabilized the region. The rise in power of these drug cartels concerns the USA as they've become a world threat. As a result, the United States Army dispatches an elite special operations unit called the Ghost to destroy and reveal the evil connection between the drug cartel and the local government. So far with all the gameplay and all the story details that we've gotten, it looks like it's going to be a blast to play. I just really do wonder if this is going to be aimed more like a multiplayer game. I talked about this before, it does have that Arma feeling to it, and it feels like it would be better having other, I guess, players around you, and I get that there's not going to be NPCs or that many in the, a lot of this environment, as I guess it's going to be built upon having other players, but if there is a single player, just single player campaign, it's going to be interesting seeing how this environment works with us, so if, hopefully it's not boring just having to drive through or, I guess, run around. I just want something that's necessarily full for an experience as a just a lone gamer. And at the 11th spot, we have Injustice 2. It's a fighting video game being developed by Netherrealm Studios. It is the sequel to 2013's Injustice Gods Among Us. Injustice 2 will continue the storyline established in its predecessor. Following the defeat of the High Counselor, the alternate timeline Batman and his insurgents attempt to piece society back together while struggling against the remnants of Superman's regime who seek to restore his rule. In the midst of chaos, a new threat appears that puts Earth's existence at risk. And wow, the first game was a lot of fun and I really did enjoy it. I'm really pumped to see what Injustice 2 will have to offer. For a fighting game that I'm really not, I'm not really into fighting games too much, but Injustice was something that really caught my eye just with the great story and even the gameplay was fun to do. So I'm really pumped to see what Injustice 2 will have to offer and I really am interested to see what type of new elements that they will be introducing. And now diving into our top 10 here at the 10 spot, we have For Honor. It's a hack and slash video game in development by Ubisoft Montreal. The game features a hand-to-hand -hand combat system described as the art of battle by the developers and allows players to play the roles of historical soldiers such as medieval knights, samurai, and vikings within a medieval setting. It is hyped as being more of a multiplayer game. I just hope the single player is not like a side piece. I really have my worries about any Ubisoft title for now on, just seeing Watch Dogs and even Far Cry 4, so I really hope this is the next hit. I love Far Cry 3 and I hope that Ubisoft Montreal starts getting back on point, and I guess maybe we'll find out with Watch Dogs 2 which comes out soon here in 2016. And at the 9th spot we have State of Decay 2, it's a survival video game sequel developed by Undead Labs. It's a zombie survival game in which gameplay is an experience from a third person view. The game is set in an open world environment and features cooperative gameplay with up to 3 other players. It's being hyped to have improved on all aspects of its predecessor. The world of State of Decay 2 is more dangerous and unpredictable than ever. I loved State of Decay with the first one, it just seemed like it was one of those sleeper games that a lot of people picked up on later after its release after hearing good word of mouth and I really do hope that State of Decay 2 picks up on a lot of the little miscues that I felt like State of Decay, the original game, that actually had. So I'm really looking forward to see what type of game this will be. I'm not too crazy about the zombie genre, but this was definitely a fun game to play. 
And at the 8 spot we have Days Gone, it's an open world action adventure game being developed by SIE Bend Studio. Players control Deacon St. John, a drifter and former bounty hunter who prefers to live a dangerous life on the road over living in the wilderness encampments. The game takes place two years after a global pandemic occurred which killed almost all of humanity, but transferred millions of them into freakers, mindless zombie-like creatures that are quickly evolving. Players are allowed to use multiple ways to complete objectives such as utilizing stealth or taking the aggressive approach. Players can also craft new items to improve combat efficiency. So far what I've seen of Days Gone, it definitely looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I said this ironically enough before, I'm not really crazy about the zombie genre, but this game really does look like it could be a lot of fun. But either way, Days Gone has to be on everybody's radar. It was one of the really big things that stuck out of E3. A lot of people were talking about it, and I can see why. It just looks like it's going to be a blast to play. It looks like the zombie game that a lot of us wanted to see from the get-go. And maybe just maybe it could be just as good as getting Left 4 Dead 3. But if anybody's listening from Valve, we're waiting. We're waiting, guys. We're waiting for that 3. Half-Life 3, Left 4 Dead 3, Portal 3, a lot of games that we want to see. Anyway guys, let's get down to that number 7 spot with Death Stranding. It's a video game being developed by Kojima Productions, first from Hideo Kojima, following his leave from Konami, which was absolutely insane and pretty much one of the biggest shockers within the gaming community. Kojima is recognized as the mastermind and creator of the critically acclaimed Metal Gear series. It will star American actor Norman Reedus, who obviously is famous for The Walking Dead, who serves as the basis for the main protagonist, and it, this game will be a single play only. Kojima described the game's genre as a sort of action game, but with new and different elements. One of the key aspects of the trailer that we saw is the idea of a connection between life and death. We don't really know much except for this little teaser trail that we were given, but this is being helmed by Kojima, which has to be on everybody's radar just because he's one of the best gaming developers out there, one of the best storytellers, just overall he great creates such amazing stories and amazing worlds to explore. So if you don't have Death Stranding on your radar, look into it guys, it's just an absolutely insane concept. We don't know much about it, but you gotta trust Kojima to bring us something that game of the year worthy. I mean, I know that I said it's a crazy concept, we don't know much about it, but from that teaser trailer, it really gets your mind sketchy and it definitely is something that a uh, typical Kojima type of deal where we'll get some more information later on and I definitely feel like this has got to be on everybody's radar and as Konami falls, Kojima rises. And here at the 6th spot we have Detroit Become Human. It's a neo-noir thriller video game being developed by Quantic Dream. The plot revolves around several playable characters, all of whom are androids. Among them Kara who escapes the factory she was made in to explore her newfound sentience. And Connor whose job is to hunt down deviant androids like Kara. The characters may survive or perish depending on the choices that are made, which serve to shape the story as customized by the player. Pretty much what I've read into this is that you'll have 12 different characters and each of them could die. There's different types of outcomes that could come of it, but there will be no game over. It continues and you, I guess you go through character through character and somehow the plot will always end up, I'm guessing, in different types of endings. Still not 100% sure if that means all the other characters will perish or there will just be a couple standing, but it definitely sets up to be something that is a very non-linear story, which may set up for some awesome replayability, which is something that I really do enjoy. Anyway, let's get down to our top five. At the five spot, we have Prey. It's a first-person shooter video game reboot developed by Arcane Studios. It's more of a psychological game rather than a horror one. Prey will not be an open world game but will feature open level gameplay similar to Arcane's Dishonored. The teaser trailer shown during E3 2016 showed the game's protagonist in something like a space horror version of Groundhog Day, which definitely is very intriguing and that's actually what one of the articles said. But I was a very big fan of the original, which I believe it came out in 2006, it was a lot of fun. I was really disappointed by the cancelled sequel in 2010. It really looked intriguing and definitely looked very fun and it sounded like it was going to be a very big open world to play with all these different types of aliens and this new one seems to be going in a different direction. I'm not 100% sure if I am really would have been more excited for the second one if it was announced but it will be interesting seeing Arcane's take on this. Now to the fourth spot we have God of War. It's a third person action adventure video game in development by Santa Monica Studio. It will be the eighth installment in the God of War series, the eighth chronologically, and the sequel to 2010's God of War 3. The game will be a soft reboot for the franchise and will take the series to the world of Norse mythology. All previous games were based on Greek mythology. Many years have passed since Kratos took his vengeance against the Olympian gods. With that behind him, Kratos now lives with his son 
son in the world of Norse gods and monsters. He must fight to survive and teach his son to do the same, a mentor and protector of his son who seeks his father's respect. Kratos must master the rage that has driven him for many years. He hopes to teach his son and make amends for his past. In this new setting, Kratos will face a new pantheon of creatures, monsters, and gods. So far, this new God of War looks amazing, spectacular. I just don't know how to describe my anticipation for this title. Whenever this game does come out in 2017, sign me up. I'll be there waiting for it at GameStop or wherever. It just looks like it's going to be a blast to play. The graphics look amazing. The story sounds intriguing, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see this different type of Kratos that we haven't exactly seen in the previous titles. Now at the 3 spot we have Spider-Man. It's an open world action adventure video game based on the Marvel comic superhero Spider-Man. It is being developed by Insomniac Games. The game will tell an entirely new story about Spider-Man and is not tied to any film or comic book. The game will cover both the Peter Parker and Spider-Man aspects of the character. The game will take place in an open world New York City. Players will be able to use some of the Spider-Man's well-known abilities such as web slinging and wall crawling as well as new gameplay elements unseen in previous Spider-Man games. One of the new gameplay elements has been said to be traversing using parkour. I'm really pumped to see this different type of Spider-Man. It has to be on the top of this list just because we really haven't seen anything I guess really with superheroes in a while and my own memories from the PS2 days playing the one of the original Spider-Man games was amazing I just love the experience and it's gonna bring some nostalgia playing this new game and I'm really pumped to see that uh, Insomniac Games is taking the helm and I really am just having high expectations for this next title and I really am pumped for this and I know a lot of other people have I've been seeing some other popular youtubers posting on Twitter talking about this so if you haven't seen any Anything about this check some of the trailers out some of the other information because this is one of the video games uh, superhero titles that we've been waiting for a long long time now to the two spot we have Red Dead 3 or Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, either way this is the third installment in the Red Dead series if you do not know Red Dead Revolver actually came before Red Dead Redemption I know a lot of people actually didn't know that but it was leaked with in-game map details showing the game will be a prequel with the ability to swim the game will be much larger compared to Red Dead Redemption Tech Radar actually revealed that a closed source of them reportedly confirmed that the leak map was legitimate. And in April of 2016, concept art for the next installment was also leaked. Been heavily rumored because of the mass shooting in Orlando, Take Two pulled Red Dead 3's announcement at E3. No statement or reason has been given, but it definitely is very interesting. I'm guessing some type of graphic or some type of uh, gameplay that they had set up had some type of content that they, I guess, felt could be offensive to what happened at that massacre. But at a recent investor's call, Rockstar stated that the game would not be released until at least April 2017. That's what the investors said, so do not expect to see this until at least April. I'm really a huge fan of any Rockstar game, and I'm just happy to see them making new content, new games, and I'm really happy to see what Red Dead 3 will offer. It will be interesting if they have like a Red Dead Online, something similar to GTA Online, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but either way, I'm just glad to see another Rockstar game coming soon, because it's been a while, guys. I think the last one was GTA 5, and it's, it was a couple years ago, I believe, back in 2013, and Red Dead 3 going into the past, because you can't go forward just because, I mean, Red Dead Redemption was right at the end of the Wild West, so it makes sense that they're going all the way back into the past, where we'll see some more gunslinging action. And now down to the last spot, we've gone through 24. Here at the one spot, we have Mass Effect Andromeda. It's an action role-playing third-person shooter video game developed by Bioware. Although it shares the universe of the original trilogy, the title is considered not to be the fourth episode of the saga. The game takes place long after the events of the first three Mass Effect games in the Andromeda Galaxy. A new protagonist, Ryder, is designated as a Pathfinder, an operative tasked with discovering a new planet for the human race to inhabit. According to Bioware, the game will feature an open world this time around, stating, a big open world is the big thing the team is trying to embrace, and that's expressed through those amazing looking planets. The game features various planets for players to explore, with each having their own characteristics. Similar to its predecessors, the game features a dialogue tree, choices, romantic relationships with companions, and cooperative multiplayer. And I actually made a previous top 25 where I actually had Mass Effect Andromeda I believe right in the middle of that countdown I believe maybe at the 14th or 15th spot but I really do regret that now just seeing how phenomenal this game looks it really does look like Bioware has put a lot of effort in this although it has been delayed till 2017 
I mean, it was supposed to be released in quarter for 2016, but now 2017. I feel like the longer they take on this, probably the better just to smoothen it out, bring us a great game, and I'm really pumped to see what this game will have to offer and the hours on end content to bring. But guys, let me know in the comment section what game you're looking forward to the most and what games I maybe I missed. I know there's so many different other games out there I probably didn't talk about there. There's Vampire, there's Persona 5, there's Sniper Ghost Warrior 3, there's Battalion 1944, just so many great games that didn't quite crack this top 25. But I want to know what game you're looking for to the most. You've heard my thoughts. Mass Effect Andromeda just looks like such a phenomenal game. I'm going to have a, a lot of fun exploring its open world. But make sure you guys dive in the comments. Make sure you like the video if you did enjoy or found it any bit informative. Make sure to subscribe for a lot more videos talking about upcoming games. And see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching.